I'm Pete Zielinski with Additive Manufacturing Magazine. I'm talking to Lonnie Love. Lonnie is part of the Manufacturing Systems Research Group with Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Oak Ridge has a manufacturing demonstration facility that can help manufacturers explore and come up to speed with additive manufacturing technology. Uh, Lonnie, so I think you, you'd agree that additive is still at the leading edge, even though it's advancing quickly. What are the frontiers of additive? What are the ways it could help existing industries or cultivate new ones? Sure. Well, I think one of the things that we have to understand about additive is its role in manufacturing. There's a lot of people that say, well, is it going to replace all of manufacturing? And, and the answer, I believe, is no. It's going to open up new avenues for making things. And where additive is really strong is on low volume, complex systems. Where the frontiers are, are changing scales, I believe, is when we start to look at, at, at making larger systems at, at higher speeds, at a broader suite of materials, okay. it's going to open up a lot of different applications. Uh, the construction industry is one that's extremely excited about right. where this can go. Uh, we've had Volvo Construction, we've had Caterpillar, Case New Holland coming in and they start saying, you know, we make we make systems that go worldwide and they're low volume and they're very complex. This sounds a lot like additive. Mm. And, and, but what they need are large systems, they need big parts. And, and so I think that if we can start developing the technologies, new industries will start to blossom. Local Motors, a yeah. uh, manufacturer that has recently opened a micro factory close to where you are in right. Oak Ridge. What is a micro factory? Why is that idea important? So the micro factory is, to me, one of the most exciting things I've seen in easily 10 years. And what they're looking at is, instead of having a factory for making cars that costs billions of dollars and takes years to go from breaking ground to producing products, they're looking at something that costs millions of dollars and it takes six months, nine months to go from breaking ground to making cars completely flexible instead of a instead of manufacturing in a serial way it's really manufacturing in a parallel way instead of having one assembly line they'll have four or five printers printing out cars in parallel and each one can be different and and so to me the micro factory is about rapidly being able to make manufacturing areas that are local to a community and and the beauty is is it's toolless there's no tooling required so one day they may be making a car the next day they may be making tooling uh, the next day they may be making furniture who knows it's completely flexible a personal interest of yours is workforce development and I wonder if you could talk about that specifically in terms of additive what do we need to do to develop a workforce that can take advantage of what additive is going to be able to do? Yeah, so one of the things that's been really fun is I'll go to universities and give talks and I'll say, well, how many of you are interested in a career in manufacturing? And it's usually they'll roll their eyes and then I'll ask them if they know what 3D printing is. Yeah. And then they get excited. Yeah. And I say, that's manufacturing. Yeah. And so to me, you start at the base level. I think one of the most exciting things are these little desktop printers and, and getting them in schools and letting kids know that as they start making things, they're learning this technology, they're learning the tricks of the trade that seasoned engineers are learning today. And so start there, start at that ground swell, get students interested in additive, but also in manufacturing in general. That, that has tremendous potential. And then work up through colleges and, and a workforce that I think we have not tapped into is veterans. Mm -hmm. So, so start trying, trying to work with veterans. We have about 10,000 active duty mil members of the military entering civilian life every month. And these are skilled technicians that are in the making. And so let's tap into that workforce and really train them to, to how to use the technology, how to design for the technology, has tremendous potential. What kinds of companies ought to be engaging with additive manufacturing? I guess what are the, the sorts of companies, the sorts of manufacturers best suited to realize the untapped potential of additive? Yeah, it, it, funny story was the very first company that visited uh, the MDF was uh, Steelcase, a furniture Steelcase. company. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. And they came in and I was like, oh, you're the wrong, hmm. this is the wrong area for you. And now I'm sitting here going, we're printing out chairs, we're printing out yeah. tables. I was like, 
where's their card? I need to contact them. It's hard to say, it's changing so fast. I would say every company, every company that makes something really needs to look at this industry and say, do you use it for prototyping? Do you do, use it for low production rate, fast entry into a new market? Really understand where additive is today where it's going and, and how to direct your company to utilize it. Because I don't, I, I'm afraid to say, well, this industry really isn't ready right. for it because I'll be surprised in a year. Hmm. So additive manufacturing at the center of a lot of changes. Um, different kinds of products and different ways of thinking about manufacturing. Thank you, Lonnie. Thank you.